Alrighty, so it's been a week and I've watched the Barbie movie twice now and if you're just going to do the like Barbenheimer double feature, watch Oppenheimer first, you just trust me on that one. Um, but of all the things I want to talk about today, I want to talk about Ken. Uh, and there will be spoilers as well, so if you haven't seen the Barbie movie, um, you've been warned. So the reviews have come in from our more conservative neighbours. The rhetoric is all fairly similar, that the Barbie movie is feminist propaganda, that it's emasculating or aggressively anti-man, um, some very polarising opinions on its portrayal of men, especially of its portrayal of the character Ken, someone who we all grew up either with or with some knowledge of. Most of us grew up with the idea of Ken as a representation of a man who could stand in as the husband, the father, the Prince Charming, or even the villain of whatever doll games we used to play as kids. And, you know, as there naturally were some villain plot arcs in there, Ken, and by extension masculinity as a whole, were seen and used in our doll game narratives as synonymous with strength and goodness and integrity. He was the protector and the lover of our beloved female protagonist, Barbie, or whatever iteration she took. So why are people, uh, mostly traditionalist audiences, reacting so negatively to Ken. Why are they reacting this way when, for the majority of women who have seen this movie, this is an accurate portrayal of men? Because Ken isn't portrayed as he has been in the past. The last notable portrayal of Ken outside the Barbie movie or other Barbie-related media that I can think of is in the Toy Story films. And he was a good guy. He always has been. But not this time. This time, Ken is not the good guy. He's not even a good guy. He's vain, he's conceited, and he's jealous. He feels disempowered, demeaned, and devalued. He's angry about it, and he's hurt by it. He exists in a world that's made by women for women. Not for him, and certainly not for any of the other Kens and not for Alan either. His entire kind are excluded from the workforce, from power, from every important decision-making process that exists within the Barbie's world. He's objectified, he's reduced to eye candy by weird Barbie. He isn't even Barbie's husband or boyfriend or anything to her. He's a man who's desperately in love and awe and jealousy of a woman he can never hope to have or be. A woman who makes him feel insignificant, like nothing more than an accessory to her success and her story. I'm sure most men can relate, in some regard, to that feeling of insignificance. It's the antithesis, it's the complete opposite to what society in our world tells you, as a man, that you're supposed to be. You know, notoriety, strength, confidence, someone who leaves an impression, who gets the job, who gets the promotion, who gets the girl, who becomes a husband, a father, who has a legacy. Someone who leaves a mark on history for decades or centuries to come. One of the greats. Everything society tells us about how a man is supposed to be exists with this fear of one day becoming insignificant, becoming unremarkable, of losing out or of fading into oblivion. And that's the only thing that Ken in this movie knows, insignificance. Until he's exposed to our world. To a world where everything is reversed. Men have and always have had power, notoriety, success, significance. And Ken becomes fascinated. This is the first time in his entire life that he hasn't felt like the butt of someone's joke. He hasn't felt like second place. For the first time in his life, he feels seen, he feels heard, and he feels respected. And all of this comes to him for the cost of nothing more than who he is and the body he exists in. For nothing more than being a man. I'm sure most men out there, most of you, remember the first time that you felt invalidated, that you were made to feel insignificant or powerless. You know, perhaps it happened at home, with a father who refused to take any input from the rest of the family when it came to matters concerning the whole family. 
or directly told you to your face that you'd never amount to anything. Planting that seed of doubt, of fear, that the worst a man could ever be is insignificant. Or perhaps it was at school. You were made to feel like the butt of all the jokes, like everything that you did was made to be laughed at and never taken seriously. Or you were made to feel insignificant physically because some kid who was bigger and stronger than you shoved you, beat you up, hurt you, made you feel scared because no matter how hard you fought back, you would never be bigger or stronger or powerful enough to make him stop for good. For those of you who didn't experience it growing up, then the first time that you were made to feel insignificant was because of a woman. A girl in class who wasn't afraid to ask questions, who always gave the correct answer, who scored higher than you on all the tests and outran you in sports class just for good measure. Or it was a girl you had a crush on, who you pined after for months and maybe even dared to ask out, only for her to turn around and say, ew, no. Or to choose some other guy, some smarter, funnier, harder guy than you. You were made to feel insignificant and you resented it. Because for your entire life, ever since you were a kid, the worst thing that anyone ever told you that you could ever become was insignificant. Especially insignificant to a woman. A woman, whether she meant to or not, took away a power and a significance that you had known your whole life. A significance that society endowed you with. She took that away from you, and you had to get that back at any cost. So when you see Ken, a man who knows nothing more than a life of being belittled and emasculated and made to feel insignificant, it draws out that hurt, that anger, that you were made to feel from your own experiences of feeling insignificant. It made you resentful and angry towards Barbie because how dare she do that to a man, and not just one man, to every man in that entire Barbie land. Ken is emasculated over and over, upstaged by other Kens over and over, his advances towards Barbie, his love for Barbie rejected over and over again. You know what it's like to feel like Ken. Because at some point in your life, you've been, and maybe you still are, Ken. So all that hurt, all that anger that's been dredged up from the depths of your adolescence comes surging forward like a rabid dog. It's a beast that comes up to protect you, to embolden and empower you every time you're made to feel insignificant, to help you claw and scrape and fight so that it doesn't happen to you ever again. All that hurt lashes out at the threat, that thing causing you to feel so insignificant. To the female co-worker who got praised by your boss for doing a good job even though you did too. To that female athlete who beat you in the marathon regardless of whether other men beat you too. It's the woman that threatens that hurtful creature inside you. Because whatever happens, whatever that situation might be, the worst thing that can happen is that you are made to feel insignificant. It is, and always has been, the worst thing a man can be. And when Barbie takes back Barbie Land for herself and the fellow Barbies, you mourn for Ken. You mourn for the respect and the power and the significance that he had achieved. You mourn as it shatters just as quickly as he attained it. You mourn and then you get angry. Because how dare she? How dare she take that all away from him? How dare she disempower him like that and be celebrated for it? And she doesn't stop there. She takes away his house, his beloved possessions, his car, his horse, his cool clothes. And when he has nothing to lose, she takes away his confidence. His place in the Ken social hierarchy. She takes away his masculinity. She makes him cry, and she makes him run from everything she's taken from him. And then, to rub it in his face, she goes to console him. To tell him that it's okay to cry, to be upset, that it's okay to feel lost and to not feel like you know yourself, to not know who you are or what you're supposed to be. 
that she understands. It's an unspoken thing, but you can see deep down that she loves him. After all, why would a woman go and comfort a man like that if she did not love him? So when Ken takes the comfort and understanding that she gives as love for him, he is rejected again. He is made to feel powerless and insignificant again. Barbie has taken everything again. And you know what that feels like. So you feel his hurt. You feel his insignificance. And once again, that beast within you bites at the bit to take away that threat, to take away the hurt so that you stop feeling his insignificance. But there's no resolution for you. Things go back to the way they were in Barbie land, or mostly how they were. The Kens get mid-level positions in government, they get some jobs, and they get some understanding, but only what the Barbies let them have. They don't actually get any real power or significance. They're still Kens. They have a little more of a voice than the voicelessness they had at the start, but all in all, nothing really changes for Ken other than he has an identity crisis and probably goes to therapy. But still, nothing changes. He's still powerless. He's just more content in that powerlessness now. And that makes you angry. Because you know he deserves better than that. That he can be so much more than that. That he doesn't get the happy ending you think he deserves to have. For you and for most other men, that was probably your viewing experience of the Barbie movie. No wonder you didn't like it. <laughs> it was, as you saw it, an aggressively anti-man, pinkified, feminist propaganda fest, made to teach women to put down and keep down men in powerlessness, emasculation, and in insignificance. It's no wonder that you hated it. It threatens your entire way of life. It threatens the future for yourself that you've been working so hard towards. Your career, your future family, your legacy. Everything you were told you should be and have. And this movie affirms to you that things can only be one way or the other. Either they can be as things are now, a patriarchal world where you have significance, or a feminist world run by women where you are made to feel insignificant. To you, the Barbie movie is everything that the far-left, feminist, queer movement threatens your way of life with. Barbie is the threat that you have to squash before she makes you feel insignificant too. I'd like to think that my retelling of the Barbie movie from your perspective was pretty accurate and the way you experienced it was pretty accurate, but I did leave out some crucial parts of Ken's journey. I did that on purpose, because I'm going to talk about them now. This is where I want to talk about my experience of the Barbie movie. It's similar to yours, because as a man, I also related to Ken. But not in the same ways that you did. As I mentioned earlier, for most men, you remember the first time that you were made to feel insignificant, and that's not a coincidence. If you're someone who sees the world in black and white, you're going to remember the first time that you see red. You remember it because it goes against everything. It goes against the way that you see the world and it goes against everything you believe. In comparison to a splotch of the color red, you're just another black and white man in a black and white world and that makes you feel insignificant, it makes you feel threatened. But you don't remember that, you know, in a black and white world, the first time you were told that you're also black and white. Why would you? That's the way it's supposed to be. It would be notable if you were told you weren't black and white, but you are, so it isn't. While you get angry at Ken's insignificance for the first act of the movie, Ken doesn't. Unlike you and unlike most men, Ken has never known anything different than his own emasculation, his own humiliation, and his own insignificance. It makes him unhappy, yeah, but he doesn't have a lot to compare it to. He doesn't have anything to look at and say, I don't deserve to be treated like this, I deserve to be treated like that instead. 
You remember the first time you were made to feel insignificant because you knew that you didn't deserve to feel that way. That you deserve to feel significant and powerful and masculine and everything that wasn't. I spent the first 14 years or so of my life as a woman. Well, that's a lie. I spent the first however many years of my life as a kid. Gender didn't really matter until I started having the wrong one. Um, but until I was able to start becoming a man, I was growing up as a woman. And it wasn't until I started passing as a man and people saw me as a man that I understood what it was like to be one. I don't remember the first time that I was made to feel insignificant because having grown up a girl and a woman, we're raised to expect insignificance. We're raised to be the best and most powerful versions of ourselves, but just as long as we don't surpass the silhouettes of the men in our lives. You don't upstage your male co-worker, you don't embarrass the boy who's got a crush on you, you don't emasculate them or degrade them, you don't make them feel insignificant, and you never make them feel insignificant in comparison to you. Because it hurts them, it makes them angry. And to stop that threat, the threat being you, they will hurt you. They will hurt you to get their power back, because how dare you make them feel powerless in a society that devalues powerlessness. So I don't remember the first time I felt insignificant, but I do remember the first time I felt significant. I was in the ninth grade. I had just gotten a proper masculine haircut from the barber in the city. I was wearing the boys' uniform at my school, and for all intents and purposes, I looked like every other guy I went to school with. One of my friends, Tom, saw me at school the next day. He smiled and said, hey look, you're one of the guys now, and gave me a fist bump. There were no questions. There was no, was I allowed to be wearing the boys' uniform? No, that haircut won't make you a real boy. Nothing. It was just a complete and total acceptance that I was a guy. That I was one of them and they all saw it that way. And <laughs> I felt like I was glowing that day. So the moment that Ken discovers patriarchy for the first time, that beaming smile on his face as he feels seen and admired and respected, that sparkle in his eyes the first time that he realizes that here in our world, he feels significant. None of you probably remember that moment, the first time you felt significant like that. But I do. I remember that first time. And I remember every time after that. And I'm reminded of them every time someone mistakes me for a teaching assistant at my university because I just seem like I know what I'm doing and nobody thinks to question that my confidence isn't competence. Or every time a customer at work listens to me rather than my female co-workers when I ask them politely to leave the store because we're closing now. It's not just unique to me, either. Most women remember the first time they felt truly seen and truly heard or truly respected. The first time a co-worker really took her advice and thanked her for it. The first time a woman gets first place and is told, I'm happy for you and you deserve it rather than telling her that they probably had a diversity quota that needs to be filled or she cheated. The first time a girl tells a guy that she doesn't feel like being intimate that night, and her boyfriend says something like, that's okay, what would you like to do instead? And suggests a movie and a snuggle rather than shaming or guilting her for not being in the mood. It's not just every man who can relate to Ken to his powerlessness and to his emasculation and insignificance. It's every woman, too. And as a man, you have a lot more in common with the women in your life than you think you do. It's okay to be uncomfortable with that thought, too. To be scared or threatened by it. To ask yourself the question, if you don't want to be made insignificant and women don't want to either, Who's supposed to win? And it's okay to be scared of the answers you find when you ask yourself that question. 
if your answer is that the world's changing and that women are becoming more powerful and men are becoming insignificant, it's okay to be scared of that answer. But I need you to know that the way that the Barbie movie ends and the way that your answer ends, it isn't the only answer there is. Power isn't a finite resource and neither is significance. It's easy to say that in order to be powerful or significant, somebody somewhere must become powerless or insignificant by comparison. It's easy to say that because it's the way our society has been for hundreds of years. Men have gotten their significance by taking it from women. And a lot of the time it's not even on purpose. It's just the way the system was designed to work. Society tells you that you have to be significant. It's the only way to exist as a man and be considered successful. And when you ask how to achieve significance, society gives you an easy solution. They tell you that in order to get fame or notoriety or success or strength, you have to make someone else be unsuccessful or weak or insignificant. And well, women are already so weak and so emotional and so insignificant to you as a man that you may as well use them to bolster your own significance. What are they there for if not to use? For you to take advantage of. It's a kind of system that only works under the assumption that power is a finite resource, and that in order to become powerful, you must take that power from someone or something else. But in doing so, in knowingly taking power from someone else and subjecting them to the same conditions you deem lesser that you brand as insignificance, you don't become the hero of that story. You become the villain. This is where I want to make the distinction between Ken and the men he represents in the Barbie movie, and the men that all these women these days all seem to want you to be. When something bad or traumatic happens to you, to belittle or emasculate you or to make you feel powerless, people like yourself, men like yourself, respond in two ways. The first way is the way that society taught you to react. When you're made to feel insignificant, made to feel powerless by someone, you take that power back. You do the same thing to them that they did to you, and you do it better than they did. You make it so that they feel so insignificant, so powerless, that there's no way they could even dare to threaten you ever again. You make them feel the same way they made you feel, and you do it twice, five, or ten times as hard. You end it, and you win. And you have to win. You have to make it final so that you may never lose again. That's what you were taught. That's what most men were taught. It's the way that your childhood heroes defeated the villains and saved the day. It's how every fight ends, every argument, every conflict. It's how America won the Second World War. The sheer immensity of that violence, of that power. Our society tells you that that's what it takes to be a man, and it's what makes you a winner. It's what makes you significant. And it's exactly the same way that the Barbie movie ends for the Kens. Barbie makes Ken feel so powerless, and Ken tries to rise up and take that power for the sake of himself and the other Kens. But then Barbie comes back to Barbie land with her manipulation and her strategies and she takes away that power so brutally with such finality that Ken has no hope of ever trying to take that power ever again. Ken doesn't win, he loses. And it's the one true battle that society tells you never to lose. So now that women are getting more powerful and more confident and more significant here in our world, that's exactly how you think it'll go. That the tables will turn and that you'll lose and that you'll lose with such a finality that you will forever be doomed in subservience to women. And it's okay to think that, but it's not the only way that this has to go. As I mentioned before, 
There are two ways a person can respond when something traumatic happens. The first way is to strike back and strike back so hard that you never lose again. The second way is slower, it's not as immediate, and it's not as final. The second option is no conflict at all. In an ideal world, or at least in my ideal world, Barbie and Ken would talk like they did in the movie, but with a few small changes. So let's rewind to when the Kens were still in charge. Barbie comes to Ken with an offer of peace. She doesn't want to fight anymore. And now that she's been to our world, a world where men objectified and belittled her and made her feel insignificant, a world where men ran everything with such brute force and power, so much so that if they gave away any of the power that they held, they would feel threatened that a woman would take that power and upstage them with it. A world where so many contradictory expectations existed for how women were supposed to exist, and how to exist in the shadow of men in their world without growing beyond it. She understands exactly how Ken felt in her world, that Ken felt powerless and objectified and insignificant, and it was because of the way that the system in her world was designed that Barbie, by being complacent in her own power and significance, failed to see just how insignificant it made the Kens. And rather than contriving some elaborate scheme to take back Barbie land for the Barbies, she wants to talk to Ken about how they can both change the system so that nobody has to feel like that, how they can work together so that no Ken is made to feel insignificant, but no Barbie is either. How they can change their system so that having a Barbie or a Ken in a position of power or influence doesn't have to come at the expense of one or the other. A system where both Kens and Barbies are not just equally insignificant, but equally significant. Working together rather than working against each other. So that nobody, no Ken, no Barbie, has to feel the way that they've both been made to feel ever again. So that sounds pretty good, right? A world where we can work together and build each other up to support each other rather than tear each other down, regardless of whether we started out as a Ken or as a Barbie or as an Alan. There's a word for that, actually. Um, before I lose you, um, just hear me out. A world where women control everything and men have no power and no say. That's not feminism. That's misandry. A world where women become more powerful that doesn't come at the expense of the power of men. That's what feminism actually is. Feminism, although derived from the word feminine or female, isn't about women-only power. It's about equal power. It's about giving men and women, Kens and Barbies, the same respect and the same recognition and the same significance. It's about creating a system where men don't feel threatened by the power of women because women being significant doesn't actually make you or any man any less significant because power isn't finite. There always has been and always will be enough to go around, despite what society raised you to believe. And women aren't the enemy. They're your equals. And that's not something to be afraid of. It never was. Alrighty, well, if you did make it this far, thank you so much for watching. I do really appreciate it. Welcome back to the channel. Long time no see. <laughs> Um, also, don't mind if I will be, like, playing around with my setup over the next couple of videos. I am just trying to work out what setup I like the most, whether I like camera or, like, phone shooting. Um, but yeah, I do kind of like this, so fingers crossed that I'll be able to keep something similar like this for the next one. Um, 
I have been meaning to make a video for a while now on like masculinity and the way that boys and young men get ensnared by like the alpha male grind set culture through like gateway content and I'll probably make a video about that as well um, in the future but I figured that with the Barbie movie in the center of public attention that it was the perfect opportunity for me to at least start that conversation here on the channel. Um, I did want to write this as an open letter to men who hated the Barbie movie. If you're a man who saw the Barbie movie and saw this and something clicked for you, then that's my job well done. That's what I hope to achieve. If it did make you uncomfortable and if it opened up some feelings for you that you want a space to talk about more, um, shoot me a message via my socials or via my email. I would be happy to have a conversation with you about it. I am currently studying and almost finished my undergrad in psychology and will be going on to do honors and masters in the future. So, you know, may as well get started a little early. <laughs> Uh, I also love learning, so if you have something you want to add to this discussion or any feedback, I would love to hear it. Let me know how you're feeling in the comments, and that's it until my next video. Stay kind.